Today we're eating nomadic Berber North African food in the Sahara Desert in Morocco. We're gonna see the cooking process using the natural things available and eat some of the most unique Moroccan food in the remote Sahara Desert. Literally, you cannot find this dish on the internet. Hands down, that's like the greatest tasting scrambled eggs you'll ever have in your entire life. It's just like a pigeon balloons. A little drink of the fresh camel milk. Oh, it's still warm. Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens and we are in Erfoud, which is in the Sahara Desert of Morocco. And this area, it's an oasis, but it's known to have some of the most beautiful desert and one of the biggest seas of sand dunes. And I'm with my friends from Moroccan Food Tours and we're about to set off for the day. Uh, good morning, Mark. Good, good morning, good morning. You. Thank you, nice to meet you. Yep. Good our, morning. Our man here in the Sahara, good morning. Welcome, welcome to the Moroccan Sahara. We are in for a huge adventure today. So we're pulling into the Risani Oasis. It's so beautiful. All the palm trees, the greenery, the buildings made of mud bricks. Such a cool, incredible place. Stopping by at the first gate of this area. It's beautiful. The architecture, the mud plaster. Oh, nice. Thank you. We made it to Risani, and this is it's a very remote town of about 20,000 people on the ancient caravan route. And this is where we're going to start eating. Uh, we're actually in a, a local uh, family uh, home, uh, and uh, we're going to see actually the stuffed pigeons uh, in the making. Oh, nice. Literally, you cannot find this dish on the internet. We've done our research. <laughs> you cannot find this on the internet. It's something very, very... And even, even at a restaurant? Maybe not? No. It's home cooked. No, 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 yeah, you, you, you don't find any information about it in the internet. Straight to the smell kitchen. that aroma coming out of the kitchen, out of the house already. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. In total. Oh, but, uh, nice. Some, three. some of the birds didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> so these eggs are for the pigeon? Yeah. Oh. Oh, open up the oven. Oh, these are all pigeons? Yes, yes. Oh. They are already uh, cooking. They are not wasting any time. <laughs> yes. Enter into the kitchen and just immediately get started on the preparation, the recipe for the stuffed pigeons, a local regional delicacy. And so they already have some going in the kitchen, but they've, they've reserved a few of the raw pigeons to, to prepare for us so we can see the process. So what's all in that stuffing? Uh, kefta. Kefta. Okay, so in the pot going is a whole uh, kefta mixture. So that's like kind of like uh, kebab meat ground with spices already that's simmering away. And she cracks open about a dozen eggs, uh, whips those up, and then puts them into the pot with the kefta <laughs> mixture. What a mixture. So that's like an egg meat mixture. And that's going to be then stuffed into the pigeons. Well, as that egg cooks, it's starting to scramble and thicken. So she keeps having to scrape it off the bottom of the panda to get that cooked egg. What a technique. Time for the pigeons to shine. Oh, nice. The funnel. The funnel goes in. Oh, man, the aroma. Oh, okay. I can help. <laughs> Okay, I'll help a little bit directly in. The aroma smells so good. And you can just see, so you just keep stuffing it in and using the, the bottle as a funnel 
to, to load up the pigeon. The pigeon is almost used like a balloon, like a sack. And it's just like mini sausage making uh, processes where you just keep loading it up uh, using the pigeon as the, as the sack. That's so cool. And you can see the pigeon just starting to balloon up. It's getting fuller and fuller. You know? Look at how tight it is. Wow, it's so puffy. I'll try a little bit of that stuffing just to get a taste of it before it's in the pigeon. Oh. Oh, man. Okay, hands down, that's like the greatest tasting scrambled eggs you'll ever have in your entire life. And I can't even imagine how it's gonna transform that pigeon deliciousness. Overdose. Stuffed pigeons. They're like literally like the skin. Oh, wow. The skin is so, so soft. So soft and almost, yeah, it's just like a pigeon balloons. Beautiful. That's amazing. What a process. That's going to be so good. And now they're going to the bake in the oven. Yeah, I can't believe how nice that skin feels. It's so clean too. So the pigeons go directly into the oven with a cup of the pigeon broth. So we have an hour and a half wait as those pigeons bake and mingle together with all of that flavor. As we wait for the pigeons to bake, we're gonna head into the town and go to the market. And so Risani is known for its souk, or market, where people from the surrounding villages and from the Sahara come together to trade and to sell the local specialties and local goods. And it is available, the souk goes on, takes place every day, but there are a few days per week when it's the busiest, when more people gather together. And so today is one of the main market days. We're gonna walk around the market, we're gonna get some ingredients and also make and prepare and see one of the foundational foods in this region. Oh, tagines. Are welcome. Tagines, oh, thank you. Yeah, this is tagine chicken. Oh, nice. With vegetable and meat. Oh, nice. Ah, you are welcome. Shukran. You are welcome of Morocco and you are welcome of my country. Thank you very much. Marhaba. Here we go. Entrance to the souk. No, Mohammed, is this a market for everything? A soup for everything? Uh, yes, or exactly. A market food for mainly. Basic food. Uh, also, you get uh, some of the cosmetic products. You get also some clothes. Uh, we're going to see also a lot of uh, uh, people uh, like blacksmiths and things oh, uh, making okay. knives and uh, all sorts of tools. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can tell it's very colorful actually. <laughs> Oh, Mohammed, oh, yes. slicing up the meat. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the meat for the medfuna. Oh, okay. Yes. So one of the main things we came to the market for is medfuna. Yes, yes exactly. Medfuna. And what exactly is medfuna? Medfuna actually is the pizza, uh, Amazigh style pizza. Uh, or Sahara pizza. Uh, okay. It's actually, yeah, like a stuffed bread. All right, uh, all right. So we, we get some meat. Uh, and we're going to stuff it with the meat. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the kidney okay. actually give, it gives nice. it nice flavor. Nice. So kidney, beef, fresh meat, uh, but called medfuna. But I think because of the, the way it looks and how it's prepared, it's been nicknamed the Berber pizza or the Sahara pizza. So we're going to see the process and we're just buying the meat first. So they're just hand slicing all of that meat. It's gonna get mixed up with the parsley, with the onions, with a variety of nuts, almonds, and walnuts, and all the spices. Oh man, I love how they just, they don't grind it, but they just uh, hand chop it coarsely. What an incredible meat mixture. The seasoning, the spices, I love the whole almonds and walnuts in there. The coriander. 
and the fresh chopped meat, mix of meat. Oh, that's so cool. And then when they need some vegetables or some of the coriander, literally, they just grab it from the stock right there and straight to the pot to ground up uh, for that meat mixture. We're also getting a special one with some green peppers. Whoa, meat delivery. Uh, we take that fresh meat directly to the community bakery. Oh, and this is like the baking street. We go right in here to the bakery. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, so you actually, you give the meat to the baker and you write down your name. Your name. Moroccan food tour. Moroccan food tour. Like With extra green chilies, extra green Moroccan chilies. Food tour. This one is, will be Moroccan food tour. Hot. Hot. <laughs> So are they mainly making midfuna here or other things as well? The bread or whatever. and midfuna. Okay. The two only specialities. Bread and midfuna. Bun. Exactly. Oh, these are all the bread. So this is resting, yeah. waiting to rise. So we're seeing the entire process, but here they do it all. They make the dough for the bread, mixing here in a giant a kneader, and then it rests, it raises, and then they make your medfuna, they make also bread, and they have all the ovens in it. But we're gonna start uh, as they make our medfuna first. Oh, oh, the whole sack of meat goes on. Oh, that's a lot of meat. <laughs> that's an unbelievable ratio of bread dough to meat mixture. It's literally double the amount. I don't even know how he manages to fold that over. His pinching bread, his dough pinching skills are incredible. Um, and then he puts that all onto the base. And then he puts another piece of bread onto the top. And then he uh, molds it, he pinches it together, and then flattens it down into a flat bread. All of those ingredients just stuffed on the inside. That's gonna go straight to the oven. That goes directly into the oven. Look at the size of this oven. In the meantime, some of the hot, fresh, Whoa. just straight bread. Mmm. Mm. So crispy on the outsides. Mmm. Oh yeah, he controls it on a wheel. Oh, so that it spins. The oven can spin. Oh, there's not just bread in there. There's some chickens. <laughs> it's, a, it's a magic oven. We put bread in and out came chicken. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> surprises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the greatest oven ever. And in the back is where they're burning wood for the oven. Oh, it's, man, it's huge. Oh, man. That's where all the fire's coming from, the heat does. Okay, it's gonna melt the camera. Yeah, that's a lot of heat. Put a giant log in there. Back here at the back of the oven, this is where the pile of wood is. This is where they burn only wood for the oven. And the oven is literally the size, it's huge. It's gigantic, what an oven. Um, and it's totally like a medieval, medieval bakery here. Shukran. Well, that's in the oven. Now we have two things in the oven, the pigeons and the medfuna, but that needs to bake for about 20, 30 minutes. So in the meantime, we're gonna walk around the market a little bit more. Majul dates. Majul dates. Are they all the same? 
Uh, yes, all, 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 all the same. same? Oh, yes. Varieties of dates in Morocco. Oh, okay. the world yeah, the world. Mejdoula. Yeah, good. One of the main things this region is known for are their dates, and these are the premium, the Moroccan Mejdoul dates. Oh, man. Mmm. All the sugariness. Wow, the sweetness. So rich. So much flavor. Oh man, I just rounded the corner and just got this poof of spices, cumin, turmeric. Oh, this market is just so vibrant and it's busy, but it's nice and relaxing at the same time. You can tell you're in a very remote, small town. Got a little human traffic jam situation. Donkey, push carts, bicycles. I think we're figuring it out. Oh, hello, donkey. Okay, we made it. We made it. <laughs> we made it. Man, this city, this town is amazing. Oh, donkey. I love the action, the energy, the vibrancy, the colors. People are friendly. Food is, oh, what a market. This is incredible. Now we've come to the livestock market. Sheep, goats, where the livestock trade happens. This, it's an overdose of senses at this market. It's truly incredible. What a spice stall, unbelievable. Talk about an impressive spice stall. And he offered us some tea. He, he has to have like at least three dozen different spices. And the aromas pouring out of this stall are unbelievable. So we're back from walking around the market and the Medfuna is ready. We're gonna pick it up. There it is, that's ours. Oh, the flip. That's our Medfuna, Medfuna. Very good. Ah. Oh, that smells unbelievable. Oh, there it is, a whole box. That's as good as it gets right there. Freshly baked medfuna in the Sahara. Man, just packed, loaded with meat, freshly baked. The meat is oozing out. There it is. Last quick stop before we have lunch. Oh, now you're a Tuareg. <laughs> Tuareg. Yeah, ready for the camel. <laughs> yes. Shokan. <laughs> okay. Ready. Nice. Ready yeah. for the Sahara now. <laughs> and ready to eat. <laughs> oh, just in time. Look at the way the skin is crispified, browned. Oh, man. Fresh out of the oven, fresh meat. It smells so good. It does kind of look like a pizza, but I mean, yeah. essentially it's a stuffed flatbread. Yeah. Oh, it gets kind of juicier as you go to the center. Oh, yes. Ooh. Juicier. Whoa. It's so loaded with meat. Oh, hot and fresh. All right. All right. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Oh man. Wow. The crunch of the walnut and the almonds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, it's so good. Mm. The onions, the fresh coriander. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Onions are super soft. Mm. Yeah, you do taste the green chili yeah, in yeah, there yeah, as well. Yeah, it's a little um, bit of cake. And the, the seasoning powder that he added as well, which mm. probably mm. some cumin. Maybe some um, ginger, ginger powder? Ginger, ginger. Yeah, this is, is his secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so good, so fresh. I mean, you even taste for sure the freshness of the meat as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So mm. fresh. Baked in that fire oven. Mm. Crispy and gooey. And the meat is so chunky. Actually, you do feel the chewiness of the meat. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, like, I like how they kept the meat chunky. They hand-sliced yeah. it instead of grinding it yeah, yeah, yeah. to preserve that texture. So you really taste the meaty 
mm. meatiness of it. You taste that you're, you're eating meat. Absolutely love that combination of meat and nuts and herbs. And what's amazing also, the baker. He did the impossible. The ratio of meat to bread. <laughs> I had no idea how he's gonna fit. <laughs> Literally the whole bag, a whole mountain of meat. That's and then he managed to smash it into the bread. One kilo <laughs> of meat into skills. a piece of bread. Such yeah. skills. Kidney. Yeah, mm. true. Mm. Thank you. Mm. And wash that down with some tea. Mm. Yeah. Mm. A little bit sweet. Yeah. Strong tea. Mm. It goes perfectly together. A harmony in your mouth. Oh, yeah. Mm. 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 Wow. Mm. Amazing. Oh, here it is. The main event. Wow. What is, what is the best way to, to dig in? Just, just fingers. Okay. <laughs> just you can come closer. Yeah, yeah. So you just, just tear in. in. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Oh. oh, it feels so good in the fingers. I like Whoa. that move. Just tear, tear off the drumstick. Yeah. The drumstick with all of that sauce, and then you've got a little bit of the pigeon meat plus all that, that all stuffing. Up. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, that's incredible. Mm. What a flavor. The oils of the pigeon have just oh, yeah. soaked into that, that kafta. Oh, yeah. And because, you know, kafta, it's kind of like a kebab meat, but it's kind of dense. But then as they mix those eggs in it, that's what makes it kind of fluffy. Mm. Yeah, extra soft. It aerates it. You get the flavors of the pigeon. Oh, that pigeon meat is like, wow. The pigeon itself just totally melts in your mouth. Mm. So succulent and oily. Mm. Insanely tasty. Unbelievable cooking process. And also, you were mentioning that it has also a unique story. Yeah, so actually this is a delicacy of the region. It's the bride's family who will send oh. it to the groom's family as a delicacy. Uh, on Eids and on special days and special occasions, uh, a tray like this will be sent to uh, the groom's uh, family. Very cool. And only Very in cool. Filala tribes, uh -huh. uh, Tafilal uh, tribes, where you get this uh, uh, this uh, delicacy or this tradition. It, yeah, I mean, it's it not it's just a, a special, it's a grand yeah. dish. It's almost like a loaf. Oh, look. He just totally split his open. <laughs> yes. You can just take your whole bird, just split it open. That's just total protein. Kafta, scrambled <laughs> eggs, pigeon, all mixed within. And then you get the bits of pigeon, which are just so good within it. Look at the pigeon right here. Look at how succulent that is. The meat. And then you want to get some of the, of it all in a bite. You get to totally dissect your own bird. You know, it's a sign of a good bird when even the white meat is juicy. It's, it's, it's juicy. juicy and moist, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not only a celebration of a dish, but it's a celebration in your mouth. Oh, that is a total, that is just incredible. So we just went straight in for the protein, but it would be typical yep. and common to eat with freshly baked bread course, as well. Yep. Bread, because it is like quite rich. So if you can dip with bread, that will definitely be good as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest scrambled eggs you'll ever have in your life. <laughs> like, kind of a combination between sausage, scrambled eggs, mm. everything. The combo, the Moroccan co combo bite. Yeah, that's heavy. Suddenly you realize. You're eating pure protein. Eggs, meat, minced meat, pigeon, just solid protein. It is not advisable to drink water uh, or cold drinks with it. You stick okay. to the tea. So make sure you wash it all down with hot tea. <laughs> to retain all the nutrients of the pigeon. 
leaning back. <laughs> oh yes, you just want to lay down, <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> that's all what you want to do after this. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a that's a seriously calorie packed dish. <clears throat> oh, you feel it, and it feels so good. There's a reason. It's a it's a dish for a celebration. Why did nobody touch the? The vegetables over here. Oh yeah. Well, of course. Uh, the, this that's is for, for the rabbits. That's for the rabbits, exactly. <laughs> no rabbits here. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's just a reminder of uh, what the pigeons were eating before <laughs> us eating them. <laughs> I do like beets. And chives, beetroot, carrots. I love the fresh salad as well. Onions, cucumber, tomato. Just a little salt and pepper. Maybe a little lemon juice. Oh, at this stage, you have to lean back and dessert fruit. Perfect way to end a meal. Oh, man. That was so good. Without a doubt, one of the greatest meals. Mm. From here, the adventure continues. We're heading into the sand dunes. Shokran. Amazing, amazing. Shokran, shokran. Here we are. Gotta love this picture. So first of all, it's important to note that these are dromedaries, which are Arabian camels with one hump and he's gonna show us how to milk it. Woo, I think I got some, some gas <laughs> from, the, from the dromedary. Uh, but first, uh, the camels will not give milk or the female camels will not give milk without the, the babies here. So he lets in the babies to milk it. Oh. oh. You can just hear that splash coming from the bottom. Oh, that's so thick, so creamy. Uh oh, baby is not that happy about it. Look at the foaminess of it. It's so frothy. Here we go. Can a little, a little drink of the fresh camel milk? Oh, it's still warm. Oh. Oh man, that's rich and creamy and so frothy. It tastes like the head of a, a cappuccino almost. <laughs> natural, natural cappuccino foam. Oh man, there's nothing like milk right from the source. Now I've got a little cup of the fresh camel milk. Oh man, that's some of the most pure, clean tasting milk you'll ever have. Yeah rich, fatty, but so pure, so clean tasting, so good. Oh, that's amazing milk. And you do want to be careful, especially as a, if you, if you like me are not a frequent camel milk drinker, you definitely don't want to drink too much at once because you can definitely get a, a little rumble, a little bubbly in the stomach very soon, very quickly, quickly. It works fast in the belly. So I think just a little, a little glass is perfect. Ah. Okay, let's just hope that we don't get too much rumbling in the belly on the ATV ride, which is coming next. I'll let you know. <laughs> If the day could not get more legendary, I mean, I mean, what could be more legendary? Stuffed pigeons, fresh camel milk, and now we're about to jump on ATVs, on quad bikes, and head off into the sand dunes. Yes, all right. Yes. Did the adventure begin? <laughs> we're going this one? Yeah. Wait, here we go. Ready. Here we go.
Okay, we made it. We're about to start yeah. on the sand dunes. Man, so beautiful, so much fun. <laughs> you did amazing. Yeah, I thought we had to go out there. <laughs> Maybe we do still. <laughs> oh man, that's so much fun. Look at this place too. <laughs> wow, this is the sea of sand. Oh. Incredible, beautiful sand dunes. What a view! I will do it with you when we're gonna go to this place. Okay. okay. Man, that was a highlight, ATV. But time to switch headgears. And we are off for the sunset. Yes. Oh, perfect. And we need to be on the camels for sunset. Hello? Before we ride the camels, actually, we're stopping for a snack, a Sahara, a Berber snack in the sand that's gonna be prepared in the sand. We thought it might just be bread, but he's making the full medfuna. Oh, oh, but a different style this time. He takes that base, he really works that dough, and you smell that meat mixture with the nuts, with the herbs in it. You know, he's folding it in. So he's making, again, a, a Berber flatbread, but this time with a different technique. Instead of two flatbreads, he takes the one, he puts in all the, the topping ingredients or the filling, uh, and then he just folds it over, pinches it, and then flattens it down into a flatbread bread on both sides, but this time it's going to be cooked the North African way, the Sahara way, in the desert, in Morocco, within the sand. Oh, nice. So there are some rocks on the bottom there. Yeah. Hot rocks yeah. on the bottom. Yeah. And how did he heat it? Just built a fire on top? Yes. Okay. Oh, there was a fire on top. Yeah. Oh. oh, he does a strategic... Um, cross X shape with the, with the burning palm branch, then lightly covers it with the hot sand, and now they're building a fire on top of it. And in about 15 minutes, baked the, the traditional way, in the desert, in the sand, we'll have a, another piping hot fresh medfuna. So the medfuna is gonna take a bit longer than expected cooking, because that's huge. And the light is starting to go down, sun's starting to go down, and we don't wanna miss the, the sunset. So we're gonna go ride camels for the sunset. Then we'll be back here, and the medfuna should be perfectly cooked and ready to go, and we'll unearth it and taste it. Yes. Okay, here we go. Yes. Oh, hi. My camel is fluffier than yours. I've got a fluffy camel, a very fluffy camel. Oh, there's no better way to enjoy a sunset than on the back, on the hump of a camel. Here we go. Oh, man. Amazing. Camels are so graceful. And as soon as it starts to get a little bit, the sun starts going down really starts to get cold. Look at the way the light is coming off of the sun onto the dunes. Man, this is unbelievable. Uh -oh. 
seeing the shadow of the camels on the dune with the sun literally is out of a movie. And the sun is just about now ready to, to go down for the day. Perfect timing. We made it. Might you see the car up there? Shukran. Yes. Goodbye, my friend. Oh. Goodbye, my friend. Oh, a little bit of a, a wide stance, but that was so worth it. Oh, the gracefulness. Beautiful, beautiful camels. What an incredible landscape and scenery. The Moroccan Sahara. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. Oh man, as soon as he starts uncovering that, starts taking off the sand, you can smell, I got a poof, a little steam coming out from that bread, from that medfuna, all that meat mixture. Just a little extra char. He's slicing it up. Yep. That is an incredible aroma. The extra smokiness from the sand baked, sand baked medfuna. <laughs> so hard, so crispy, oh, yes. so oh. crispy. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Huh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> it's so hot. Mm. Whoa. That is like literally a minute out of the sand. So crispy, so smoky. The bread looks the uh, it's a hardy bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It is. It's like hardier and uh, thicker than the, yeah. the last bread, but it's yeah. more, that's like, you can tell that's a real proper Saharan desert cooking technique. What's that? Like? That's mm. so juicy, so juicy, so meaty, so hot and crispy. Wow. <laughs> How do you say delicious in Berber? Imim. Imil. Imim. 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 I can't believe how crispy it got in the and smoky from the sand bake. Mm. 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 Oh. It's the greatest charred crust you'll ever have. Wow. Sand chard. Then washing it down with tea is a must. <laughs> oh. mm. Strong tea. Perfect to wash down with medfuna. <laughs> and amazingly, they were able to really like brush off all of the sand. So it's not even sandy, you don't even get like a sandiness in your mouth. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. We ended the day hanging around at the campfire listening to some live drumming. Uh, absolutely beautiful. So peaceful here, so quiet. Just the stars in the sky. And I mean, what a day from stuffed pigeons to fresh camel milk to ATV rides. Oh, to the medfuna cooked two ways, one in the sand. It was uh, an absolute epic. Day. I want to say a huge thank you to my friends Mohammed and Omar from Moroccan Food Tours. This wouldn't have been possible without them arranging it, and they do tours all around, especially food tours uh, based all around Morocco. And I'll have their information in the description box below, but highly recommended. They're amazing guys, and they can really set up 
uh, authentic, incredible food experience. It was once in a lifetime Moroccan food experiences. Ooh, and it's freezing cold at night. Uh, so that's gonna be it. I'm about to head in to go to sleep. So just wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now. Make sure you stay tuned for more food and travel videos. And also make sure you stay tuned for this entire Moroccan food trip where we are going all around the country eating some of the best Moroccan food. You're not gonna wanna miss any of it. Good night from the Sahara Desert. I will see you tomorrow on the next video.